All right, so in this first design build series video, I'm working on the front wheel, uh, starting by redesigning the rim. So I had initially had a double beadlock rim design, 24 inch diameter, but I needed to adjust the offset and the material thickness. So the first thing I started with was that rectangle in the center, which is the hub mount. And then now I'm working on the bosses that are going to hold the bead lock bolts. And I'm playing around here with some thicknesses. So what I ended up realizing was that the strength of the bolt comes from the fact that it has a curve in it. I'm referencing some method beadlock wheels and some race line beadlock wheels. Those seem to be really, really popular, really strong. And then I realized that in order to determine the wheel offset, I first need to figure out what our hub design is going to be. And I'm making an eight lug duplicate oversized version of really popular portal hubs from 74 weld and that's what you see on the left there that was a shell file that i was able to get a hold of by emailing the guys at 74 weld this is a lug bolt which is a carriage plow bolt stainless steel three quarter inch four inch length and i'm starting by making the unit bearing backing plate and so this backing plate has a nine inch diameter and it needs to hold uh, Dana 80 bolt pattern, which is eight lug on 170 millimeter bolt centers. Um, so I'm basically just referencing the 74 weld hub design and then scaling everything up to suit my dimensions. Right now I'm working on the hub snout and those cool little uh, cuts that go in there. And then now I need to make the carriage plow square hole that's going to hold the the eight lug bolts or lug studs <clears throat> so now what i'm trying to figure out is how much offset i need on the rotor of the hub to clear the stator of the hub and turns out everything is really nice and simple half inch half inch heights so i'm just making a series of bosses here so the part on the right is a mock-up of a Dana 80 unibearing. I couldn't find a model of one. And there's a lot of complicated bearing stuff and O-ring seals in there that I'm ignoring for the purpose of this model, just because it's an off-the-shelf part. So I just need to get like an approximate. So now I'm looking at my old portal hub design to figure out what the four gear spacing is going to be so basically the way that these portals work you have an, your input shaft which is offset from your hub and your input shaft is connected by two big gears that reduce the drive so i decided to go with a two to one ratio so i have an uh, eight inch gear in the center and then four inch gears for the drive so four inch input gears, eight inch output gears. And then now I have a housing with an offset to make that cool shape. And I'm referencing the 74 weld design to make sure I have the offsets right and the boss thickness is right. So I can get an approximate mock-up of what the hub outer shell is going to look like. And now I'm making an assembly. So the purpose of this is that I need to figure out what the back spacing is between the front place of the hub rotor and the back face of that shell, which would be a minimum distance for where the where the upper and lower control arms are going to live. So now that I have that dimension, going back to the wheel design, I see that's four four inches. So I'm going to try to make some curves here they're going to add some strength so that 
where the hub connects to the wheel, I have a linear shear force and I want that to be as close as possible to the center of the wheel drum so that I can have those forces aligned. And now I'm working on the bolt pattern for the Dana 80 hub, which is eight on 170 millimeters with a three quarter inch stud. And then the, the bead lock bolt pattern, which I accidentally put to half inch 20 thread pattern, but I needed to drop that down to three eighths eventually. And then these are the wheel holes. So this is just my favorite design from Method. I think this shape looks really cool and it works well when you make a circular pattern around the wheel because you still have a lot of meat on the spokes and it's still pretty lightweight. So before I started cutting this down, that well, that wheel stock uh, weighed 180 pounds. And so now I'm realizing I need a chamfer here on the hub, on the portal hub shell, so that I've got plenty of clearance there between the wheel and the shell. That all looks good. I realize I need to drop this down by a half inch so that I can get the center of the wheel to be in line with the outermost face of the portal hub shell. Copying that wheel over and then finishing the assembly. I realized I forgot to make the beadlock ring. So I'm referencing how Method Race Wheels does it. They have a really cool video explaining exactly how they do their beadlock rings. So I'm going to put a counterbore here for the beadlock bolts, which are 3 8 20. And then Method has these really cool gripper things, which they just run a drill in a little bit, just past the tip of the drill, and then have a pattern around that. And that just adds more friction to the part of the ring that's contacting the tire. And putting that in the assembly, realizing I forgot to put holes on the back side of the wheel because this is a double bead lock, which as far as I can tell, nobody makes a 24 inch double bead lock, which is why I wanted to make this custom rim with the custom offset. Um, it would be really easy to make that wheel out of billet. I think forging a wheel is a lot more expensive because you have to make tooling for it, but just like a billet 7075 is plenty strong. So now I'm adding in these 12 point stainless steel studs to attach the B-lock ring to the wheel and then circular pattern around that. And then boom, the assembly is done.